so good morning everyone again uh, that's the second time I got the opportunity to speak here in this uh, meeting it's a pleasure um, it's always good to to be able to show new things following the title of the this session the future technologies so we have uh, implemented some uh, new features outside of the main scope of Transmart, but we wish to include these features in the coming future in the main platform. We need collaboration for that. And we show more or less the ideas that we have been working together in the scope of different projects uh, in the IMI uh, uh, environment. Okay, so I am coming from uh, Luxembourg. As everybody knows, it's a relatively small country. Uh, it's pretty easy to cross around. I, once it's only 61 kilometers from Belgium to Germany through Luxembourg. Uh, it's a very um, international country. As you can see, there is many, many people from all over Europe living there. Um, so Luxembourg fits easily five and a half times in the smallest state of the United States. However, it's a very dynamic environment to do research in multiple aspects of biomedical uh, research, right? We are doing our activities in the University of Luxembourg that's more, a little bit more than 10 years old. It's 13 years old now. It has recently moved to a new location at the Belval site in the south of the country. And as you can see here, just use the pointer. This is the main uh, building of the university and uh, we are located a little bit uh, south from this setup in the Biotech 1 and 2 buildings. Uh, directed by Dr. Uh, Rudy Bailing, and the bioinformatics core is led by uh, Dr. Ryan Schneider, that was that's the chair of this session. So, as I said, uh, in the European scope of IMI, there are many projects uh, in which uh, TransSmart is being used as the main uh, translational biomedicine integration tool. Uh, we have um, different uh, client projects, as you can see in this slide. However, uh, the activities that I'm going to present to you, they are more or less um, developed in the scope of the Etionomy project. So Etionomy project is a project meant to create a new uh, classification, a classification system uh, for etiology of Alzheimer's and Parkinson's disease. So the major uh, idea is to access different features on the subjects recruited for this project, for participating in this study, and then by analyzing these molecular signatures, brain imaging data, as you'll see in the future, we want to address a new manner to classify to which subgroups each patient uh, belongs uh, in this disease, for example. I will show with more details later how this is uh, made. So uh, for the bioinformatician, I would say that we could summarize the disease as the, the SCAG pathway that you can visualize here. So we have many, many different uh, molecular bioentities acting um, in which it will culminate with the symptoms that everybody uh, is familiar in the Alzheimer's disease uh, uh, phenotype. And what you can highlight in this graph are these two major events here. You have the formation of senioplaques and the neurofibrillar tangles. And this will cause like a progressive degeneration of the, the brain, right? It's a very, you know, very um, fast summary of the disease. It's just to contextualize here with the presentation. So as everybody knows, as time, time passes, you have the degeneration of the brain affecting different regions of the brain. So, and then with uh, this, uh, the progression of the disease, you lose different uh, cognitive functions and you culminate uh, with the very, very um, bad scenario that everybody's familiar with this disease. So for the project of etionomy, we have uh, one prospective study that will be uh, conducted. It's about, um, it's a cohort of about 720 um, subjects in which uh, 240, they are idiopathic PD patients. You don't know why they, they suffer of PD. Uh, 40 uh, patients, they have a mutation in distinct genes relevant for the disease. 45 patients, they are subject as, as risk of the disease. People with um, Alzheimer's disease, 150 subjects. People with a cog a no cognitive impairment, however, amyloid positive in the scans, uh, which are classified in 60 uh, preclinical AD patients. And 180 uh, healthy controls. So these uh, people will be recruited in two different uh, countries in Europe. So in uh, Spain, France, Germany, and Sweden. 
and they will have different types of data collected, right? So we, we are interested in providing the electronic infrastructure to collect the clinical data. So the biological specimens, they will be regulated by the uh, organ in Paris, the Institute of the Brain and the Spinal Cord. And the imaging data will be also uh, collected for these subjects. So uh, the imaging data is the focus of the application of trans matter I'm going to show in this presentation. So as everybody knows, uh, the anatomical magnetic resonance imaging, the MRI scans, they are very used in the uh, biomedical research to find insights about various diseases. So one of the things that you can do with this technique is the tissue classification and the classification of different anatomical um, structures. So one of the things you can, uh, of course, easily do is the cortex parcellation. That means you can divide the brain scan into different regions uh, and see whether there is a variation in between different subjects participating in the study for the volume, for example, of these uh, uh, subregions there. So, and this is very relevant in the scientific literature, as you can see. There are many journals that they will uh, analyze the volumetric changes in the brain of different uh, subjects and we will try to associate uh, differences in the cognitive asymptomatic patients uh, with Parkinson's disease, or for example, um, compare uh, dementia um, with the cerebral atrophy in different regions between Parkinson's and Alzheimer's, or even um, analyze um, the volumes of um, regions like the hippocampus uh, into patients suffering with depression, for example. So there are many, many studies out there using this technology for, as a biomarker, and to discover biomarkers in terms of uh, brain volumes. Um, and of course, né, as we could show in the previous slide, uh, these volumetric changes, they are not like um, discrete. Né? This is a longitudinal. In the, in the course of the years, the different brain regions, they will shrink and shrink, and then you observe the symptoms of the diseases. So now we have the technology to access, uh, the, to parcelate the brain of the subjects that will participate of the, uh, on, on the study and uh, identify the specific regions that you want to target in terms of um, data collection, right? Uh, and this is what we receive from our partners in the Netherlands. So we are uh, having a partnership with the Erasmus Medical Center in Rotterdam uh, and they provide to us like uh, what all the bioinformaticians they love to see, right? A table with numeric values for all the brain regions that are scanned in the subjects. So we have a huge table. You have data uh, that will give to you the volume in cubic millimeters for every of these regions, each of these regions. Um, another uh, data that we receive is the connectivity in between these regions. So. Uh, it's possible to access using a methodology called the diffusion and functional uh, MRI whether they are anatomical uh, entities, axonal fibers connecting different regions of the brain, right? And these regions, they um, can also be used as a biomarker to see whether patients suffering of different stages of the diseases, they have a different numbers of uh, connections or a lower or, let's say, a reduction in the numbers of fibers that connect to one region to another one. So, and this is scanned. There is a technique called uh, tractography. Don't ask me, please, many details about that because it's not my scope. And at the end, what you can do is to uh, create a 3D rendering of um, the fibers that connect these different regions. So this is your biomarker that you want to evaluate in between the different uh, uh, subjects. When you put together the volumetric anatomical features together with the connectivity, you can come up with these connectivity maps. And it can have different um, depths, right? You can come for, from 83 regions of interest to more than 1,000 regions of interest in the brain in which you will analyze the volume and the connectivity among them. At the end, what we want to see for every subject is a connectivity uh, map for the whole brain created by tractography. Right? And of course, analyze which are the differences. Um, okay, so again, the Erasmus provide us another beautiful table in which you have the uh, subjects in here, and you have codes that we identify that the region one is connected to the region two by 27 uh, neuronal fibers. 
And this code is represented uh, in here for the re different regions that you are addressing, whether they are connected or not. So what I do, uh, now coming to my contribution in this project, is to fetch this data, preprocess, curate, and load on Transmart. So now we have a representation on Transmart for the volumes of different subanatomical regions of the brain. This means I can see for the frontal lobe, the left hemisphere, the volumes for the white matter, gray matter, lesions of gray matter, and parenchyma. And these are biomarkers collected for all of the regions. I can have the access to the uh, cortex parcellation, that means the volumes of every sub uh, region of my cortex, and also the connectome, so the connectivity between the inferior parietal, uh, parietal region to, for example, here the fusiform of the last left hemisphere. I can expand and see the numbers of neuronal fibers connecting these uh, two regions. And this is everything on, on, on Transmart. So, uh, as everybody knows, this is populated on the server side of Transmart in the database. And to access programmatically this data, we have to learn how to interact with the Transmart database by using specific queries, right? Um, what we did is like we developed um, a dedicated API that will fire different commands. I mean, we have different endpoints mapped to functions in which they will give us back in a programmatic way the numbers that we want to access for the connectivity and for the volumes observed in between, uh, uh, observed in these regions. So, and when you query our API, it returns a very easy uh, programmatical uh, data that's a JSON format. So you can communicate from JSON now to whatever software you want. So basically, uh, if you are a developer, you are familiar with that, but to illustrate here for those that they are not, this is the way that we pick up data out of Transmat to expand to the world. Um, so after that, what I, uh, okay, so here you can see which data is that. You have the free surfer cortex parcellation data, you have the connectome data, and you have the bigger, that means the subanatomical volumes of every region of the brain. So what I did after, by asking a lot of people in my group, is to create like a, a web user interface that's not, it's only a proof of concept, and of course I want to put this within Transmat later. But the idea is to create different, um, you know, web design technologies to, to make something useful out of that. So I have a little movie here, it's very short, that will show you this prototype. Basically, I have one tree that I can navigate from Transmart to every subanatomical regions of the brain. And then I'm checking here for the total volume of these regions what are the differences in between affected and control um, subjects deposited on my database. So I forgot to tell you that this, um, this demo was created by analyzing the brain scans of ADNI subjects. So our partners in the uh, uh, Erasmus Medical Center collected 53 subjects from the ADNI collection and processed the imaging data from these patients. And this is what you see here. So the interface then permits you to query the differences for the white matter lesions in the total volume of the brain among the uh, between these two different groups. And if you see a statistical difference in this ANOVA test here, is this running? Yeah. You can have like a p-value and the f-score that will, uh, will indicate for you whether there are differences. In here you can see that indeed these volumes are very different between control and affected people, right? So what you could do now is to navigate for one of the specific groups, let's say this subject here, and to see a very large uh, amount of lesions in the white matter. You can navigate by using this interface here in all the volumes for all the parcels of the cortex. So then you can check here what's the volume in cubic millimeter for uh, that specific region of the brain for this subject. So in the same way, you can check by the hierarchical edge bundling application that I, I connected to the data from Transmart, which are the numbers of fibers that connects one region to another one. So uh, another thing that you can do is like, uh, there is an, on this interface here, an extra uh, network that's pretty small here just for demo purpose that will tell you which genes are relevant in the literature 
and connected to the uh, brain region that I'm navigating on this tree here. So this, is, this can be created via text mining. And then you can have here dynamically on your interface genes connected to the brain region. And when I click in one specific gene, I can pop up here the mutations observed for that subject and stored on Transmart that might be, who knows, uh, linked to uh, the phenomena that I'm observing here. This means the fluctuation of the brain volumes or the connectivity. So it's a way now that you have uh, uh, that's possible to integrate volume data, connectivity data, features of subanatomical regions of the brain, text mining linked to genetic data for the subjects of your study. Um, and all the data, of course, is fetched from Transmart via uh, this API that I just uh, showed you. So when you click in one of the regions that you are checking the connectivity, you can load by using the Brain Browser Framework the volumes observed for every region of the brain into this scaffold here represented in 3D. Of course, you can expand this and come up now for the 3D rendering of the data from the subject that you selected within, uh, inside this uh, brain model. And of course, if you take out this cover, you can see the patterns of connectivity observed in between these different brain regions. Here, it's a model of the corpus callosum, but of course, if you give me uh, the data that represents the brain, of, the brain of your subjects, we can use this technology together, right, with the platform to represent the brain and the connectivity observed in, in between these different regions. So, uh, well, this is a very um, simple interface because it's only for, wow, what happened here? It's California again. Okay. Did it touch? Is something going on? Okay. Uh, looks like PowerPoint just crashed. So, yeah, I'm mean, just at the end of the presentation. Actually, there is not. It's, it was a, the very last slide. Um, yeah. Okay. So basically, what I wanted to show there um, is that you can use different technologies made for the web to prove the applications that you want uh, to integrate, like in between like the data flow from one application to another one, and then uh, make this to be useful for you to query your data that's stored on Transmart. And of course, uh, I did not put a lot of effort to create the, the, the interface that you could see there, the user interface, because it's not my intention. My intention is to show that this is one application that we can have in the future, and eventually integrate it into the main scope of Transmart so that we don't need to use any API to fetch data. We can only query the data directly from the database of Transmart and make this uh, and enable this to be uh, running within uh, the software. My next slide was actually the Transmart interface with uh, that, that, you know, the screen that you saw glued within the Transmart. It's kind of a dream for the future applications of the tool. So, and with that, I, I would like to, to thank you for uh, your attention.